Today we're going to build an e-commerce website powered by Google Sheets with the help of Spread Simple. So let's get started by showing you my spreadsheet. I have four tabs down here. The first one is Website Products All. Then we have a Website Products, a Purchase List, as well as Form Responses 1. And let's set a little backstory before we get into things. This is going to be for an art gallery. So most of their inventory is going to be one inventory items, meaning they make a piece of art and then it goes on the website. Someone comes along, they buy the piece of art. It's a one item product. So then it needs to be removed from the website and updated accordingly. The client is not very technical. So they can't go in and deal with a lot of the e-commerce solutions, Shopify, WooCommerce, all of that. So this is going to be a good solution for them once we set everything up and train them how to use it. Now that's the benefit of Spread Simple. The difficult thing is getting all the formulas working correctly, setting up the automations and doing all that fun stuff. That's what we'll be doing today. And without further ado, let's get into it. We're going to have a form that funnels into this spreadsheet and the client knows how to fill out this form. They're going to come onto their website on a private page. And every time they have a new product, they're going to fill this out. And then that's going to auto populate this form responses sheet. Now from the form responses sheet, we're going to take that data and we're going to bring it onto a website products all sheet. And let's go ahead and do that right now. We're going to write an array formula. So we're going to say equals, and then we're going to use this little bracket sign. And then we're going to jump to form responses and we're going to bring in column B for product name. I don't really need to bring in the uh, date that they added it. I don't think at this point. So we'll close that off with again, the close bracket. And that's going to bring in all of the product name information here. So if we type in test and then we jump back, we'll see that it says test. What we'll do is click this little corner, this bottom corner, and we'll drag it across to here. We don't actually need the email address. So let's delete that out. The reason I have that is because under the Google forms, you can come up to settings and you can collect email addresses and give a response receipt. Every time that she fills out the form, she can then go in and edit it after submitting it. If we don't want her going onto the spreadsheet. In this case, I'm still back and forth with her on what she wants to do. However, this will grow over time. I have a video where I actually did an acuity calendar replacement. And I need to make a follow-up video on that because the spreadsheet's gotten a lot more advanced since then, but we are using it and it is working quite well. So this can be done. It just takes a little bit of growth thinking and uh, sticking with it. So now that we brought all of our website products onto one sheet, we can do a formula on this sheet and we're going to do an array formula here. So let's do array formula and let's actually write this array formula in a way that essentially calculates today's price. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if, so we're going to do an ifs statement and we're going to say the row A to A equals one. And then we're going to give it the title that we want to give this column, which is today's price. And then we're going to say a to a equals blank, blank, true. And now this is the root formula that we're going to use for our array formulas on this spreadsheet. Now we need to actually calculate today's price. So I can't even tell you if I know everything that's going on in this formula, but I know it works and it works well. So go ahead and screenshot this. I'll actually leave it in the description uh, if you want to copy it and use it in your spreadsheets. But from this point, we're actually going to calculate today's price by taking the retail price and then we need to multiply it by the discount percent. But because the discount percent will be the percentage off, we're actually going to need to multiply it by one minus the discount percent. So we'll do one minus the column D and then we're going to close that up. And then again, and one more time. And notice here, when you close it each time, you see how it highlights where you're closing. And then if we close it one more time, it will highlight that with the little gray. Hopefully you can see that. And then we will hit enter and then we get today's price. Now let's test this by jumping on and giving it a 20% discount and then jumping back. And what we should see is a $40 price. So it's working well, and that is a formula now on our website products all. Now what we're going to do over time is come back to this website products all sheet, and we're going to cross-reference it 
with the purchase list, which is then going to say when things sell to remove them from the website products sheet, which this sheet here, we're gonna actually write a query formula equals query. And then we're gonna have to give it some data and we're gonna bring in the website and I'm just gonna do control shift and then I'm gonna hit the left key and then we can do control shift down, but I actually wanna take it all the way down because I'm just gonna go all the way. And then this is gonna query and bring everything in. What we actually want to query here is where E is greater than zero and we'll do a one and close that off. So now if we jump back to form responses and we take that at zero, so that means it's gonna be sold out, then we jump to our website products, it will be removed. So now we've got this set up at least initially, whenever it is greater than zero, it will be on our website products sheet. So now we're ready to actually build the Spread Simple website. Let's jump on to Spread Simple. Let's build a new website and I'm gonna share this link. I'm gonna just copy the link here. We're gonna come on to our Spread Simple website and we're gonna create a new website from that link by clicking the continue button. So we're just gonna match everything up here. The price will go with today's price and then the image will go with image link. And then down here, we can enable the search as well as sorting, but we're gonna allow sorting based on price. And then I don't think we really need filters, but let's add specifications. Let's actually show the quantity. So we'll show how much inventory they have on a given product. And now our, our site's pretty much there, but we need to add the buy button and we're gonna go ahead and do the order form and let's click apply. And then when you click the buy button, what you'll see is a name, phone number, email, and notes. Now it's important to point out there's no shipping information or any of that. We could say in the notes column to specify. However, my client doesn't want to accept payments or do anything complex through this system, which is you know a lot easier for us uh, to set up because they're going to contact the person once they place the order, confirm the shipping address, as well as any specific details. In fact, we may not even put the price on the website because they may want for people to call for pricing. I'm not exactly sure yet, but what we're gonna do is build this out extensively and then we'll cater it once we have our meeting with the client. So it's pretty much done at this point. Let's go ahead and click save. And then I don't need this header section because we're gonna embed this as a widget on the website. But if you wanted to design all of the elements, you can come up here, you can show a header, you can create a menu with a logo as well as a favicon, all of those kinds of things. But we're gonna turn them off for our needs because all we need is this widget. And then we're gonna publish this and I'll go ahead and give it a name. And now that we have everything pretty much set up as we need, at least right now, we can come into the checkout and go to webhooks and we'll be able to paste in our webhook from Integramat. So let's jump on to Integramat and inside of Integramat, we're gonna need to create a new scenario and we're gonna need to do webhooks, custom webhook, and we're gonna need to add one here and we're gonna call this shopping purchase and let's go ahead and copy the address jump back to spread simple let's paste in our address here for the webhook and we'll publish that site and we're also going to jump here while we're at it to the general and we're going to copy this widget code under their shop store and we're going to embed this code as an html code on the website so let's go ahead and paste this in and then we should be able to now view this on their actual website and see the shopping cart. So again, this is gonna look super basic starting out. Eventually we can actually do a details tab. Uh, we'll cater this to the client's needs and things will look better over time. Now we need to set up Integramat so that it populates our purchase list. I've given it some headers, name, email, phone number, purchased, amount, due, notes, and order ID. Now to test this, I have two products in the cart. And what I'm gonna actually do here is set up the relationship first and foremost. I came here and I redetermined the data structure. I'm gonna show you how we set this up. So we click redetermine, and then what we do is just fill out the form. And we click checkout once the form is filled out in its entirety. 
And then we jump back to IntegraMat, and what we should see is that it captures everything and says successfully determined. Now, once it's done that, we can now set up the Google Sheets integration. We just type in Sheets here, and it brings up Google Sheets. And what we're going to do is add a row every time a purchase is made by selecting the spreadsheet we're working on, as well as the tab that we want to put the row on. Our tab does contain the headers that we want. So let's actually come in here and we're going to map these columns. So we're going to go name and then we're going to go email, phone number, and then for what they purchased, we're going to come under here to items and we're going to go with title. And then for amount due, we're actually going to go with the total amount formatted. And then for notes, we're going to go with the message idea or the message rather. And then for order ID, we're going to go ahead and give this an order ID. Now let's click OK. Let's run this one more time. So we'll click run once, jump back in, and then we're going to buy the same product. And we filled out our form. We'll go ahead and click check out. That's OK. And then we'll jump back in. We'll make sure everything fired off. It did. And now our spreadsheet should be populated. And it looks like it is. So we are good to go there. I don't like this formatting, but uh, that's minor for now. We won't worry about it too much. And what we'll see is the name, the email, the phone, what they purchased, as well as the amount due. And so on our website products all, we're going to actually write an array formula here. And I'm going to take everything that we wrote in the initial formula, and I'm going to paste this in. But for the name of this column, we're going to call it number sold. And then here we'll go ahead and hit enter. And then what we should see is that the column is now for numbers sold but we need to give it some criteria to see the items sold. So what I'm actually going to do is sum if, and this sum if formula is going to look at a range uh, based on the criteria we give it and sum up the numbers sold. So essentially the range that we are going to be looking at is on our purchase list. And we're going to go back here to the purchase list and we're going to go with the purchased and then we're going to give it a comma and then we're going to jump back to website products all and we're going to compare that against the product name another comma and then the sum range here so i actually need to jump back into my integra map because i need a quantity for my sum if formula so here for cart items quantity we're going to go with that and it might throw a little bit of a wrench it into our end all formula because what if people buy more than one thing We'll get to that here in a little bit. These are the types of problems that you actually encounter with when working with Spread Simple. But once you set it all up, you don't have to worry about it. So now let's go back to the spreadsheet and let's actually fill this out one more time. And then on the spreadsheet, it will now populate with that data. And then we need to give it a quantity. And this will be our sum if column, the quantity purchased. And then let's close everything up. And then now we should see numbers sold. There we go. Availability. We're going to do an array formula again. So I'm going to copy the first half of the formula and I'm going to come in here to my availability. And instead of numbers sold, we're going to call it availability. And then we're going to say the quantity less the number sold is greater than zero. And we need to write an if for this. So if the quantity is less the number sold is greater than zero, then we want to actually go with the quantity minus the number sold for what's available. And then if that is false, then we want to say sold out. And let's close everything up and make sure that this works. So this item is now sold out and then the other item is available. So now we need to jump to our website products. And remember we wrote this formula, this query formula where E is greater than zero. Well, we need to change that now because we have availability here. And what we want to essentially say is the column I instead of E. So here we're going to say equals query and we're going to do a query on the website products all. And we're going to do it from A1 to I9999. We need to expand this out a bit because we need to cover the column I where I is greater than zero. So now when it is less than zero or it says availability sold out, it will not 
populate on this website products sheet. Now this is where there will be some changes. I'm making this as a preliminary version. The best thing about Spread Simple is once you get everything ironed out, it's very easy to update. And they just announced today a public roadmap, which is an encouraging sign. However, this inventory management stuff is very confusing. It's complex. And I frankly am still working on a few things. Most notably and perhaps most concerning is what happens when people buy multiple items from the same cart. Now that's not going to really slow down my current client who's going to be using this because it's such a personalized experience that she wants to give. She essentially just wants to share her products online in a way that people can actually fill out a form and purchase, not a true e-commerce, whatever. However, we could at any time turn on Stripe or PayPal. She could accept payments and hopefully Spread Simple will continue to improve their inventory as well as some of their other features. You know, tax is another thing that I don't want to bring that into the discussion, but currently I don't see any tax, which again, you could fix in, in Excel. You could actually write formulas for your tax, but you're doing a lot on the back end here. And if you're running a true e-commerce with Spread Simple, I would encourage you to look at Gig Grove instead. I'm going to be making a video on Gig Grove in the near future. But to me, Gig Grove is a better e-commerce solution. I bought it a while back. I haven't made a video on it because of the tax problem, but they have resolved that now. So hopefully I'll be using that in the near future because you can now bring in, uh, at least in the United States, which is where I am, you can bring in all the different tax datas. And for e-commerce, that is the one thing that most of these sites miss. So let's actually show you my client's experience. We're going to create a new product. Then we're going to purchase the product. We're going to watch it from start to finish on the website. And let's show you the site. So we'll come on to their website here on the product form. And we're going to go to their Facebook page. So let's look at the photos. Now my client is going to be mostly sharing products to her Facebook page. And now she wants to add it to her website as well for people that aren't on Facebook. And in general, this is just the next step. So for the most part, she'll upload a product image and we're going to copy this image address and we're going to go on the form. We're going to paste the image address in the image link area. We're going to do one quantity item because there's only one of these, no discounts. And I don't know the price. Let's charge $60. Let's give it a product description. We'll hit submit. And then we'll jump onto the website here and let's do an incognito window so we can get the true customer experience. Come on the website and then we see the new item, $60. And let's actually buy one of these items. So we'll come in here, we'll fill out our information. We'll even do the notes ship to my beach house and we will check out. So now that we've checked out, let's refresh. And what should happen is this should be removed but it's not. And that's because our Integromat isn't actually turned on. So let's go back here and we got to turn this on. I always forget process the existing. And now if we jump back and we refresh the incognito window, it should no longer be there and it's not. So it took it a second there, but now it's no longer on the website. The item has been added. It's been removed because it was sold. And that is going to wrap up this video. There's definitely some things that I still have to work out as far as this is concerned. However, that system there, her filling out the quick form, someone coming on and purchasing it and then removing it is something that we are going to be moving forward with in a real world scenario. So Spread Simple can be used. It does have its functions. However, it also has its limitations. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. Give this video a like if you made it this far. Leave any questions or comments down below. Hopefully this video has brought you some value. I've been learning more and more about Google Sheets because of this product. And ultimately, I will say that I see a lot of potential in it. My name is Scott with AIProfits.com. Hopefully you're having a fantastic day and we'll see you in the next one.